sleep attacking from majestic cliff sides and revealing dramatic plot twists. That's right, it's Till the Last Gasp from Darrington Press. In this high-stakes storytelling game of character confrontation, two players take on the role of duelists, each vying to overcome the other in a fight for character and relationship development. Over a series of rounds, players swashbuckle or laser tussle their way around a cinematic battleground, fighting to overcome their opponent and win the duel. Once both players have discussed the type of story they want to tell, whether it's in theme, genre, or just two specific character ideas, setup begins with each player's personal components. A player board, one set of stance cards, five in a set, 10 edge dice, one dual die, and one action point token. Each player also takes a character sheet. There's also blank sheets available for players to create their own character, as well as additional blank sheets on DarringtonPress.com. Character sheets feature helpful story information such as what the character is known as, what they are notorious for, what they can be recognized by, their overt motivation for entering the duel, and a hidden motivation for dueling. Maybe they don't even know themselves! And a space for additional info the players may want to include. When creating your own characters, pages 12 to 15 of the rules have handy examples for each of these categories. Next, select a map for the duel to take place on from one of the nine available options. Each reflects a different mood, genre, or setting, providing the backdrop for the duel. Set the chosen map in the middle of the game area. Take an unused map and flip it to the play aid side, setting it nearby. Remove the rest of the maps from the game. You won't need them. I said remove them. No, don't, I didn't mean it. I'm not mad at you. Set the drama deck face down in the center box and place the two round tokens on the first round number slot. Place the objective deck next to the play aid along with the X card. The X card provides a visual or tactical indicator for any story element or idea to be vetoed from the game. At any time, if a player wishes to omit or change an element of the scene for any reason, they can say, X card that, or just tap the card. Next, set the stakes by deciding why the characters are dueling and their intended outcomes. Players can choose to defeat, to exile, to a turn, or till the last gasp. Each of these have increasingly heavy stakes to the story. During the game, players will be able to collectively raise the stakes or single-handedly lower them in order to play with the tension and drama of the duel. Then each player draws three objective cards, reads through the four objectives on each card, and chooses the one they like best. Each player chooses the card which has the most objectives that player would like to play with within this duel, setting it in their objective card slot and discarding the other two. And that's set up! Before the game begins, two quick prologue moments set the stage for the duel. First, players confront your foe by each describing how their character appears on the scene. Are they crashing through a window followed by a somersault? Or are they revealing their face at an elegant masquerade festival to the gasps of the other guests, of course? Anything to start that drama on a high note. Then, each player poses a question to the other player about their character. Like, do you remember what you promised me when we last met? Or maybe something more like, what are you afraid of, punk? Players ready your weapon by preparing five edge dice, removing them from their dice pool and placing them into their dice slots, either protective or offensive, in any distribution they choose. They are considered ready and will be rolled to generate action points during the duel. Gameplay occurs over rounds, each divided into four phases. Select a stance, roll the dice, take your turns, and end the round. First up, in the select a stance phase, each duelist secretly chooses one of their stance cards to play for the round. Though they have five cards, only three of them can be selected for this phase. Bold, an offensive stance. Quick, a ready stance. And wary, a protective stance. The other two are rattled stances and characters never start around in a rattled stance. However, 
During gameplay, a character may be shifted into a new stance against their will. Once players have selected, they both reveal their choices simultaneously and place them on the stance section of their player boards. Next, in the roll the dice phase, players each choose a number of their edge dice they wish to roll. The player's chosen stance dictates which dice they may use. Bold or quick can access offensive dice, while wary and quick can access protective dice. Once chosen, players then roll their dice along with their D20 dual die. Total the results and consult the action point table on the player board. A roll of one to four gives one action point, five to nine gives two, etc. Place the action point tracker on the action point total for that player. Any rolled dice are now unreadied and return to the player's dice pool. Next, players take your turns, starting with the player who rolled higher on their dual dice. On a turn, the active player may take one action regardless of how many action points it costs. Action options come from the player's chosen stance or the current location of the duelist on the map. Players spin those points, then role play their action, describing the character's behavior, what the action looks, sounds, and feels like. Players alternate taking turns until both run out of action points. When a player is out of action points, they can still role play reactions to their foe's actions. No, please, don't stomp my face again. I didn't mean to murder your whole family. <laughs> Finally, end the round by advancing the token on the round tracker and begin a new round by selecting a starting stance. Rounds continue until a player uses the end the duel decisively action. This costs four action points, requires at least four rounds to be completed, and the players must have completed three of their objectives. Players can now find a resolution to their duel, including a change of the stakes if needed. I'm gonna quote the rules here because they sum it up nicely. If you end the duel decisively, this does not necessarily mean you do so as the victor. Strike your foe down if it feels most dramatically appropriate, but you may find that over the course of this game, your character's priorities and desires have changed. They may now wish to decisively throw their victory away, to run away, to surrender, to tell their foes to just kill them now. This is the climax of your story. Forgiveness can be just as dramatic as death. And that's the round process. Some other important mechanics of the game? Resolving objectives. Players use objective tokens to mark off objectives as they are completed. For those with multiple steps, a blue token is used for the initial steps and orange for the final. Players need to complete three of the four objectives in order to end the duel decisively. Drama deck. Some actions require a draw from the drama deck. These cards contain role-playing prompts, which might reveal a character's background, intentions, or even true feelings. Players should use the prompt to act out the scenario given and apply any game effects listed. Rattled stances. Some drama cards or stance actions force characters to become rattled, disturbed or overwhelmed by the developing story, limiting their fighting prowess. When rattled, a character is either defensive or reckless, changing their action options on their turn. Ready edge dice action. This protective action allows players to spend action points to ready new edge dice onto their board. Since this is the main way to get more edge dice, it's important to occasionally go into that protective stance. And that's the basics of gameplay. Till the Last Gasp has some fantastic advice in the rules for dynamic storytelling and creative collaboration, especially since the players are working together to tell a story about intense opposition. One of my favorite pieces of advice for this game, be obvious. Let me give you the quote. When it's your turn, be obvious. It may sound odd, but trying to be clever or surprising is rarely as engaging as saying the obvious thing so that then you can deal with it. And here's another gem. When it's the other player's turn, listen carefully. Accept your fellow player's ideas like the gifts that they are. Try to listen more than you talk. You can find gems like these along with scenario options and additional game modes all in the rule book. And that's how to play Till the Last Gasp. I'm Becca Scott. 
this is Good Time Society, and I would love to duel you sometime, so come on back for some more great games and good times.